What a wonderful Savior, amen? We've enjoyed our time as we begin to begin the commencement service this evening. I believe that God wants to do something special for us. What do you say? We're going to do something special tonight. And before we do, I just want to ask that you will reverently join me as we pray, asking for the presence of God to be with us. Oh, Father, oh, how much you love every one of your children. For over 6,000 years, as this great controversy has been in session first in heaven, and then taken down to this earth, and in this last generation, we know that it's coming to an end. And you're putting together your team to finish your work. We pray, Lord, that you would bless us, that angels will come and tabernacle with us as we spend this time together. That it may be for just a little while a transport from earth to heaven that we might get a glimpse of Jesus a glimpse of a higher world that this world will grow strangely dim in the light of the beautiful face of Jesus and so Lord we thank you now abide with us we pray for we ask it in Jesus name amen What heavenly music, amen? In Revelation chapter 12, we have one of the most significant texts in all of the Bible. Revelation chapter 12. And we want to focus our attention on one verse of Revelation chapter 12, beginning in verse 11. If you'll take your Bibles and turn to Revelation chapter 12, beginning in verse 11. And when you get there, if you let me know by saying amen. amen. As those that are coming and are quickly finding their seats, we want to notice what it says in Revelation 12, verse 11. Let's read that together. What does the Bible say? And they overcame him. Who is the him? The devil, Satan. They overcame him by two things. What was the first? By the blood of the lamb. We know who that is, don't we? Whose blood is that? That's the blood of Jesus. The Bible says, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and conjunction. Something with that blood. Not just the blood, but something with the blood. What does it say? And by what? By the word of their testimony. Now, you notice there's a difference between just having the word. This is not just called the word. This is called the word of what? Not the testimony. The word of their testimony. In other words... It's one thing to have the word in your hands, but when you have experienced that word that you know it's true, not just because it says it, but because you've experienced it in your own life. It's not just God's word now, and it becomes, guess whose word? It becomes part of you. It says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. You know, before we get to heaven, we're going to have to have a testimony. Amen. Do you know that no one will be in heaven that does not have a testimony? God will have done something for everyone in such a way that they will have something to say, and we're going to testify, and our testimony is going to give us strength to overcome the devil. You know, that's one of the reasons why God gives us the joy of testifying. It's not just a blessing to others. It reacts even upon ourselves. Did you know that? You remember the woman who had the issue of blood, and she had been sick for many years, and when she reached out and finally got the hem of Jesus' garment, was she helped? Did she touch Jesus? Was she healed? Was she restored? And as she touched Jesus, healing virtue came out of him, inside of him, and then Jesus said, what did he say? Who touched me? You remember Peter, don't you? Like all this crowd and you saying who touched you, but you know it's possible for a million people to be in the same room and only one person touched Jesus. 
It's possible to come to a service like this where Jesus is here and yet we all are seeing everything else and maybe one person really touch him. You know, that's possible. But the one that touches Jesus, something happens. What happened to that woman? She was restored. And then what did Jesus say? Who touched me? And then finally the crowd backs up and that woman says, I touched you. Jesus knows who touches him. And then he said, all right, tell me. And she told him of the healing virtue. And we're told in the pen of inspiration that Jesus did that to strengthen not only the faith of the multitudes, but to strengthen the faith of that young lady. It deepened the impression as she gave the testimony. And so I think that it's fitting for us to go into a testimony time. What do you say? Amen. Somebody says, well, I don't have a testimony. What is a testimony? Let's make it simple of what a testimony is. Let's go to Luke 8. And we're going to have those that were in the school of the prophets give a testimony. Now, there's a number of you who was in this wonderful school with Jesus. And so it's going to be necessary, as you turn to Luke 8, that we make the testimonies comprehensive but short. Amen? So that a number can take part in it. One of the things that can desperately hurt a testimony service is when a, a, a short testimony turns into an hour. Is that right? I read of a story one time when Sister White said they were in another country testifying, and she said almost 200 people testified in less than a half an hour. And I thought about that for a moment. I said, wait a minute, then if you do the math, those people had to get up and they, had to, they, they, had to, they didn't give a whole story of what happened when they were three and four and five. Now, that's wonderful. Praise God for it. But they had to come straight to the point so that a number can take part. We have quite a number. We want everybody to be able to say something of what Jesus has done. Amen? In the book of Luke 8, we see simply what a testimony was. Luke 8, beginning in verses 39. You know the story. The demoniacs who had been terrible, terribly possessed by demons. And they met Jesus. Did Jesus help them? Oh, yes. Everybody had ran, and the disciples were running fast. You know, Peter and John, they could run. And they were running so fast, they thought that Jesus was with them. And they said, well, where is Jesus? And they looked back, and Jesus did not run. Jesus wasn't afraid. Jesus put that same hand up that stilled the sea, the same hand that cleansed the leper, the same hand that caused Lazarus to come from the dead. That same hand was lifted, and those men that were possessed by demons stopped. And they came back to sanity at the power of Christ. Then Christ delivered them. You know the story. And they wanted to stay with Jesus, but Jesus said, no, they, the people want him to leave. You know, it's, it's a shame when we want Jesus to leave. Isn't that a shame? They wanted Jesus to leave, but Jesus, Jesus left, but he left back some missionaries. I believe they were in the school of the prophets. What do you say? And what did they say? Verse 39. What did Jesus tell them to do? Let's read that together. Luke 8, 39. It says, return to thine own house and show great things God have done unto thee. So what was that testimony? They simply, they didn't, they didn't go through a whole thing of everything, but they showed what God had done for them. That's a testimony. And the Spirit of Prophecy says in these hour of ages that it is for the want of this testimony that the church is dying. Has Jesus done anything for you in the school of the prophets? Not Elder Mason, not Elder Davis. Has Jesus done something for you? Then you have something to tell. Amen? What we're going to do to speed up the time, we're going to ask everyone that testifies that if you would, if we're going to do it row by row. We'll start at the first row. Amen? And we'll do it in an orderly fashion. We're going to ask you to come up and stand right here and bear your testimony. And we'll start with our uh, Elder Tate. Tate, would you start us off, please? If you'll stand beside me here, brother. Right there. Right there. Right there. Okay. Good evening, my brothers and sisters. God is so good to us. Friends, uh, and shortly that I've explained earlier to Brother Davis, Elder Mason, that I was fighting coming to the school, struggling. And I've been blessed these last few years to be around the world and teach health evangelism. But the Lord was impressing upon my mind something was missing. Something was missing. Jesus touched me in this school this week, friends. Amen. Amen. I thank our brothers for coming and sharing with us. Now I know the missing part, my brothers, that has to go out to the people, has to go out to the world. 
we're so thankful for the blessing and the sacrifice of our men and the people that had this program, that put this program together. Very thankful for that. And as I look, as I go around the world, I, I see on people's faces the want of, of, of men and women that will stand for the right, though the heavens fall. Friends, we have that opportunity, all of us tonight. God is waiting for, his, for us, his church, to stand for the right, Amen. though the heavens fall. Angels are wishing they could do the work that's been entrusted to us. Amen. But I thank Jesus for the blessings of this week, for the knowledge, and for his holy angels bringing me here this Amen. week. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon and happy Sabbath, everyone. Um, I'll try and make this short because as Pastor uh, Jeremiah said, we need to get everyone's opportunity to get in here. So I'll just simply say what the Lord has done for me in the School of the Prophets. I did attend the camp meeting on August in Nashville, North Carolina. It was a blessing. And, and I can say similar to what we experienced then, this is what we experienced now in our group uh, that attended this, this training. And listening to the brothers and sisters feeling the the impression of the Holy Spirit that we have to go forward, we have to go back to our churches, and we have to tell them, our brothers and sisters, this message. They have to know the message. And we pray because of the Holy Spirit. We need his guidance, and we have to work with ourselves first. We have to humble ourselves and uh, listen to his guidance. Amen. And I just simply say, for me, uh, I, I solicit your prayers to be faithful in the truth that we've been received, and Amen. we'll go forward and do the work that needs to be done. And I truly believe it. I mean, I've, the Holy Spirit has been working with me for a long time. And I, I tell you, I know it is time because this world is spiraling down mm. out of control. So with that, thank you and happy Sabbath. Amen. Um, I praise the Lord for um, allowing me to be here. Um, a friend of mine encouraged me to come. Um, and it was a little difficult getting here money-wise and things like that. And so I praise the Lord for allowing me to be able to attend um, with Elder Holland's help and a few others. And I praise the Lord for our teachers and the wealth of knowledge that I've gained and a, underst a better understanding of um, my purpose as a Seventh-day Adventist. Amen. Amen. Hey, happy Sabbath, everyone. I want to thank God for bringing me here, literally bringing me here from New York. I was watching the Decision Time series done by Elder Mason, and I was really touched by it. My father was touched by it also. So he told me, let's see if we can get Elder Mason to our house to see if he can do some presentations. So I went on the website, saw that the School of the Prophets was going on, and um, saw that it was in Georgia. So I didn't think that I would be able to be here, to make it out here. But my father was like, see what you can do. God will make a way out of no way. And so literally the Lord paid for the plane ticket. Amen. He got us here. By the time we, it was the, the flight ended, um, we went from New York to North Carolina, North Carolina, to come here. When we landed in North Carolina, Elder Highland, I, I saw a text message by him saying we have a ride every single day to come here. Um, so we were provided with transportation to get here and transportation to get here to the church as well from the hotel. And the one thing that really proved to me that the Lord really commissioned for us, for my, myself and my brother and my, and my good friend to be here was that at the hotel where we are, um, they, have a, they have a shuttle bus and the shuttle bus will bring you anywhere from a five mile radius for free. And so we already had one option with Brother Holland and with the shuttle bus, this church is exactly 5.00 <laughs> miles Amen. from, so he, God literally provided a way for every, every single thing and every single day that we've, um, I've been able to come over here every day, the Lord is telling me, this is what I need you to do. And he made provision for everything. So he's just taught me just to have that Sabbath rest every single day of my life and to know that if it's money that needs to be provided, food, transportation, whatever the case is, he has it all under control and righteousness by faith is all that I need in Jesus Christ. So I'm thankful for that. Amen. Good evening, my name is Paul. Um, well, this has been a very humbling experience for me. I actually received the call at a moment when I was asleep, literally. Um, I remember I was back in New York and I was on my bed and I was sleeping and I got a text message saying, you know, there's something going on called the School of the Prophets. 
And I had for weeks been listening to um, something by Brother Davis over here called Preparation for the Final Crisis. And my brother Michael, he was telling me to listen to Brother Moses. And I was like, you know, no, you got to listen to Brother Davis. The Spirit is speaking. He's like, the Spirit is speaking to Brother Mason. So I'm like, you know, I, when I have time. So I never found the time, and he never found the time. So it's almost as if God literally said, you know, you're not listening, and you're not listening. Now I need to school both of you at the same time. So sit down and listen to the teacher as I teach. And, um, you know, he literally, as Michael said, he provided everything. There was nothing. I, I didn't have a way here, but I trusted him. And, you know, I started packing as if I had the plane ticket. And he gave us the plane ticket, and he brought us here, and he really humbled me. So, Amen. you know, now I know exactly what's expected of me, and I'm praying by God's grace that I can do everything that he's acquired of me. Amen. 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 Happy Sabbath. Um, I guess um, my testimony, you know, I felt the impression of, to get back in the word. And, um, you know, I was pretty much far off. But um, I started off going to um, these up. Uh, Praise God. Praise God, bro. These Bible studies with Chris. And, um, and you know, so that kind of led me the way. But so um, I didn't have much vision on what to study, you know. And before this, uh, this week, you know, School of Prophets, you know, something impressed on me that um, – I needed to get back to the pillars of the church. <laughs> and um, so, you know, I started going in. And um, and so it was just, you know, a blessing, that the timing, you know, because this school gave me vision, gave me the vision that I needed and the direction. Amen. Praise God, brother. Let's finish his work. God is getting ready to finish his work, brothers and sisters. Trust the Lord in all thy ways and lean not unto thy own understanding. Acknowledge God in all your ways and he will direct your paths. If there's, um, if there's one thing that I always did as a young man was have a dream for myself and walk along that path. But, um, but what I learned here is that Jesus always has a goal for each and every one of us that we cannot even imagine for ourselves. For example, Joseph... Joseph was thrown in the well by his own brothers. He would have never imagined to ask God, you know, to deliver him from that. And he became the second personage of Egypt. Moses grew up as a prince of Egypt. And he never would have thought that he would have gone back in a desert to get trained by God for 40 years. As a young man, I read the Bible and uh, I've studied, but never to an extent where I believe that it could change me and truly turn me into an agent to affect others around, around me. But um, I praise the Lord, I really do, because I've been provided with tools with which I can put myself in the condition in which God can use me. Christ's object lesson, page 419 says, there is nothing that Christ so desires than agents that will represent to the world his spirit and his character. Amen. So I praise the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Um, I techno technically wasn't supposed to be at the School of the Prophets this week, and the Lord changed that on last Sabbath, and it was a blessing for me. I think if I had to put it in two words, God gave me focus and he gave me clarity, and that means a lot because we're told that success in any line demands a definite aim. And I pray that the Lord has, he's shown me what I need to be aiming at. He's shown me what I need to do. And so I know that success is right after. And so Amen. I praise him for that. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. You know, at lunch today, someone asked me to explain to them what took place this week. And I have to say, honestly, it's hard for humanity to explain what divinity has done. This was not an ordinary week. And I'll sum it up by saying it this way, that never have I seen it clearer, our position in our work and God's position in his work. Amen. And it's time for us to finish the work. Amen. 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 Happy Sabbath, church. Um, just like my husband mentioned, it's really hard for me to explain what has taken place. It's... It's just 
such a life-changing experience. You know, I've been hearing messages, and a lot of times um, it doesn't move from theory to experience. And I truly believe that this time around, I saw that there was something different. And I just praise God for allowing him to use um, Pastor Davis and Elder uh, Mason for these meetings because it has done so much. And I encourage everyone to obtain a copy of the DVD so you too could experience what we have experienced here. And we're told in uh, Matthew, um, Jesus was saying that to, to his uh, disciples that blessed are your ears mm. that hear because there are so many that would wanted to be at the School of the Prophets and they were unable to be there. And so I'm glad that God had made it available through the DVD and um, it's just been such a life-changing experience. So praise God for that. So for me, I um, decided to do the Schools of Prophets because I wanted to do it a year ago or whenever the last time they had it, and I couldn't. And so when I heard it was coming up again, I was very excited. And basically in December, I decided by faith, I didn't have any money or anything that I would go and sign up for it. And you know, I kind of hinted to my mom, you know, you want to invest in me so I can go and take the class? And so, you know, I was kind of banking on her, but then the Lord opened up a job for me, and I was able to actually get a paycheck just in time to pay it by the Monday. And so I was just, just like praising God for this because really I had a, I guess the Lord was impressing me that I really needed to study more. And I was just trying to figure out, again, the vision, where to study. And I was doing study groups, but I was really seeking more from the Lord. And so this really opened my eyes. Amen. And I'm just thinking, Lord, who can I share this with? Amen. I'm thinking of all my friends from university, everyone that's even at my uh, church. And so, you know, I'm just thanking the Lord that he opened up these doors for me. And I've even been talking to some people saying, you know, we need to not necessarily do a school of the prophets yet, but do a study group of the prophets and everyone get together and really try to really digest this because it's been a lot this week. So yeah. I just want to praise God. Happy Sabbath. If you guys listen quietly, you'll hear my heart is going. Anyway, um, I'm nervous, but I want to thank the Lord for this opportunity. Um, Monty had registered uh, us, and I said, yeah, I'll go. And then I thought, I'm not going to go. But the time came, and I said, you know what? God didn't take away my job back in November for me to stay at home. He opened up the doors, and I'm going to go forward. This has been a blessing. Every evening I reach home, my husband would go, what did you learn today? I'm like, I just can't tell you like that. <laughs> so <laughs> by God's grace, I have to compile everything in my mind and, and take my notes and, and make it clear. And then we can do um, a Bible study, you know, as my daughter said. We're going to work with um, people at church, our family, which breaks my heart. My son is here from New York. And, oh, God. Anyway, um, I'm praying earnestly, and I want so much for him to come into the faith. So keep us in prayer. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church. I'm Paul, and I'm one of those people that have a testimony that will last for six years. But I got from this setting, our prayer session, how to pray out loud. Normally, I'm the person, that quiet place for me, Jeremiah, is the closet. And from what I got from this session here, that I need to do what? Pray out loud. And in praying out loud, I realized after I started practicing, guess what? Everybody in the house is hearing what's on my heart. You know what's on my heart and my prayer today? Is that everybody who can, you match that in your offering today. Okay? That's my prayer to you. Amen. God bless. Amen.
I just want to say how blessed <clears throat> I am to be here. I wasn't going to be able to come, and two days before, God worked it out. <clears throat> and the only thing I want to say is that I understand how the disciples on the road to Emmaus felt because my heart has burned within me this week. And I praise God for not the messengers, but the message. It has changed my life, and every person that was in my class has had their life changed. Praise God. And now I know we all must finish this work. Amen. But we got to let God finish the work within us, or we are not going to be able to. Amen. So I praise God for this class. Praise Thank you, God. brother. I'll tell a quick story about how I got here. I... Um, about four years ago had decided I needed to be working for the Lord instead of for myself. But I couldn't quite figure out how to do this or where I was going to go. Um, about two months ago, I'd been praying really hard about my job and what would I do if I gave up my job? How would I live? How would I survive? Where would I go? All the normal questions. Um, and I found peace. I woke up on a Monday morning and I go, I'm quitting my job today. The Lord's answered my prayers. There was no doubt on my heart, Amen. no doubt in my mind. I had such peace. I knew it was exactly the right thing to do. Um, didn't have another job planned to go to. Didn't know what the Lord had planned for me, but I knew that if I would just step out in faith, he would show me. Um, and at about that time, I learned of this class. Hmm. So that fell right into place. And I, but still not knowing what I was supposed to do, I came to class. Now I know what I'm supposed to do. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Good evening. Um, my name is Bruce Walker, and everybody knows my camp, my wife Karen is usually with me every day, and she don't really go nowhere without me, and I without her, and we came into this denomination, Seventh-day Adventists, three years ago. And I tell you, we love it. My wife is a minister. We went through every denomination there is, but there's nothing like Seventh-day Adventists. Our new people are so good and beautiful. And I just want to thank you, all of you, all of you, for all your work. Thank you. He said he got it. Amen. <laughs> As a soldier for Christ, amen? Amen. 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 Good evening. Good evening. I am so thrilled to have been able to come here to sit at the feet of Jesus. Amen. A friend of mine called me and invited me to come. And I was I packed my clothes and stepped out of my door and fell because mm. ice was on my porch. I didn't know how I was going to get up. And so some people were going by, and I waved my hand. Nobody paid me any attention. So I said, Lord, how am I going to get up? So I had some rubber mats on the banister. He said, put them down. I did that and slide up to the banister and pull myself up. Hmm. I had to blow. 
So I had to go several times up the ramp to my house to get my, ba my belongings to put in the car. So I managed to do that. I drove five hours to come to Atlanta because I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, my friend and I couldn't connect. So I sit in the Berean parking lot for about two hours. And I saw some people going into the church and I went to them to ask for directions to get to where she lived. And finally I got there. Amen. I knew the devil didn't want me to come. He put everything in my way so that I wouldn't be able to attend these meetings. But thank God I was able to attend. Amen. I've been kind of sore. <laughs> no bruises. Amen. I had just had surgery on my toe that Tuesday. So you see me, you saw me wearing these big, those big shoes. <laughs> but thank God I have on some real shoes today. Amen. <laughs> And I want you to pray for me because um, I have been studying two and three hours in the morning so that I can get the scriptures in my mind mm -hmm. because I know God has more for me to do than what I do. I'm a Bible instructor for my church, and I enjoy doing that, but I know now what I need to do for the church. Amen. So some others can get on board to help finish the work. Amen. I have made up my mind, if nobody want to go to heaven but me, I'm going to be there. Oh, I'm, we're coming with you, sister. Oh, thank Praise you. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, we're not going to let her go by herself. What do you say? <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm standing here this evening. My heart is going boom, 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 as I sit over there. But I have so much to say, I don't know where to begin. I think I'll begin with telling you from a week ago, Sunday, I think it was Sunday, I had to go to Pathfinders. I had a dream. And as I was on my bed, the doors opened wide wider. I got up and up inside of my bed. I was. I began to pray. I just began to pray to the Lord. I didn't know what was coming. Then it was the week of the school of prophecy. My husband came the first, the first day. The second day I was here in the room back there with my little two-year-old daughter. And she was so sweet because every time it was prayer time, she was down praying. And she allowed me to hear, um, not too much pass me by, but I was still getting the message all together because we're getting the tape. <laughs> so I could still go over anything that's missing. But to say that, that week, um, we have ch I have children, so they had to go to school and that first, that first day, that Tuesday, I didn't have to worry because uh, they had something after school. We had to go back uh, 45 minutes. I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? But that program was going on until after 6, so we got back that time. So I said, good, thank Amen. you, Jesus. The next day, um, the next day, I left my truck and drove my husband here so the children could have the truck. They could go in, they could stay warm after school. That went by great. The following day, I'm not knowing, knowing what's going to happen. But then I used it to take my neighbor's child to school and he opened the door again. She was able to pick him up and pick my children up to take them home. So no worries there. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. And then there was Friday when we got off um, early. So, you know, to go home and prepare. So everything just went 
straight, plain, no worries. And I'm just grateful for that and grateful for what I learned here. Amen. What I learned here, I just have so much to say. And God knows my heart. He said, Amen. pray without season. And that's what we ought to do. That's what we ought to do, saints. That's what Amen. we ought to do. But we have to finish this work. Amen. We have to. We just have to. Just thank you so much. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> I don't know where to start. There's so much that I can say. I know we have limited time, but um, Brother Chris knows some of my situation and how the devil is trying to stop me from coming to this School of the Prophets. <clears throat> um, I had made up my mind to go. Uh, I'm an independent contractor, so I have my own business. So when I don't go to work, Okay, you know that you know, I'm not getting vacation time pay. <clears throat> so I spoke with my project manager about it and said, you know, I'm going to need to take this week off. And we had things going on. We had a number of things going on. And I was sitting in a meeting with him, and he said to someone else that we was talking with, he says, no, he can't be here that week. I mean, I just had mentioned to him once, and he made it clear that he can't, he can't be here that week. Amen. So I just said, God is making a way for him to go, I had reservations. And then I decided to go, and then I got jury duty notice for the 22nd. The day, because Martin Luther King was a holiday. <clears throat> so I said, I'm gonna go on Martin Luther King Day, and then go to jury duty, and fulfill my civic duties, and see if I get released. I showed up that morning, I had mistakenly misread the jury duty notice, and it said that I was released. I didn't Amen. have to come Amen. on Tuesday. So I was free to come the, the rest of the week. Of course, right then, the devil said, go to work. And I said, no, because I knew my wife was going to be here. She was going to come in and cover for me that weekday. But I decided not to come. I decided to go and come to School of Prophets and not go to work. So this, this School of Prophets really have fortified and strengthened me um, in knowing that we have to finish the work and that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, Amen. but against, I'm going up here just in case I get nervous, Amen. against <laughs> flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rules of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Amen. And brothers and sisters who, if you have the opportunity to attend, you should attend because you will be strengthened, you will be encouraged, you will know that the Adventist faith, this Adventist church, has a purpose. Amen. And the purpose is for us to finish the work. Amen. No one else, no other denomination, like the brother mentioned, can finish this work that God has given us to complete. So give us, dear Heavenly Father, please be of us. I do pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor. I was on an island. I thought I was all by myself. I was like Brother Mason. I knew there were 7,000 out there. And now I found them. <laughs> and it was a blessing. I mean, I was sitting over there. You know where I was sitting over there, folks? And when these men started to preach, I wanted to get up. I wanted to go right beside them and say, listen, I'm with you guys. You're one of me. Praise God. I found you. I want to tell you, dear brothers, you've been a blessing to my heart. Praise you've God. encouraged me. You've sharpened my vision. And I want to say, please, if you, you on this side, we've been there, but we still need to get the tapes and go over and, and try to get those 5,000 slides in order. <laughs> <laughs> but you who haven't been here, you missed a great blessing. If you can, purchase those tapes, and you also will be blessed. We have to finish yeah. the work. Yeah. And this minister has been on the front line for over 30 years, preaching this truth. This is a testimony of someone who knows the word of God. Amen. And I say that not to uplift any man, but to let us know that God is doing something now. He is composing the team that's going to finish his work.
didn't want to follow Pastor Pahoka because I thought he'd use up all the time. <laughs> I wanted to come to the first school of the prophets, but I had a conflict. And uh, this time I got a call from Brother Chris, or either I saw him at church, I can't remember where, and he said, we're going to have a school of the prophets in Atlanta. I said, sign me up. And I'm so glad that I came. Amen. And if any of you ever have the opportunity to do the School of the Prophets, you need to grab it immediately if you can. But the thing I, I take uh, most from this week is victory over sin is not just not a belief. No. It's a commitment. Yeah. And so through the grace of, of Christ, I'm going to behold Jesus uh, more this year. Yeah. And through his strength and yes. his righteousness, yes. I will get victory over sin. Amen. Praise God. Hello, everyone. Hello. I'm Beverly Young. And um, what I'd like to say is that after having read the pen of inspiration, where the Lord tells us that a revival and a reformation is the greatest and most urgent of all of our needs, and that it can only come mm. through prayer. That took me to my knees. Yes. And I started praying that, and then the Lord put it into my spirit to say, wake up. So mm. in my prayer, I was saying, Lord, wake me up. Amen. Amen. Bring me to repentance. Yes. Put me on the straight and narrow. And because I am incapable of keeping myself on the straight and narrow, I asked him to keep me there. Yes. But the school of the prophets has shown me what the straight and narrow truly is. Amen. And brothers and sisters, we got to find out what it is. We need to go to the school of the prophets. If you see it coming anywhere near you, get there. Get there and get there fast. So you can get the understanding of what the Lord really wants us to do. Because we think we know, but we don't know. And I'm just so grateful that I was able to come. Praise and God. I just want to thank my husband because he paid, he gave me the money so Amen. I could come. <laughs> Praise God for <laughs> and husband. And I just want to let everybody know that I, I love him for doing that. Amen. Amen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, my Good sisters evening. and brothers. I heard about the School of the Prophet when my wife visited one of um, the last time the elders were in town. And I have it locked in my head that it was the 25th to the end of the month. I work all the way out in New York. So when I found out it was the 21st, I was to get back to work. And then that only would leave me with two weeks to work and to get back here. Friday last week, I was in the, on, the, on the construction site. And the person I work for said, you can be leaving money to go to a seminar. And I looked him in the face and I said, you wouldn't be able to pay me enough. Amen. I never left on a Friday to get here. And I plan to leave Friday evening. And there was no guilt of breaking the Sabbath in my mind. I knew I have to stop and buy gas several times. But I knew if I leave out on Sunday, I'm going to be too tired. Monday while I was here, I, I was doing like this at one point, because still under the stress of driving. There's a certain time of night when the Lord wake me up and speak to me. And last night, the, at the same time, the Lord woke me up. And this is what he communicated to my mind. With so many Seventh-day Adventists and so many Christians in this region, Seventh-day Adventists, why did God allow me to fit in this small group who would be exposed to what God has raised up the Seventh-day Adventists mm. to do? Brethren, I looked deep into that and I prayed. I asked God to help me to be faithful. Yeah. Because it must be for a reason yeah. why with so many Seventh-day Adventists in this region and from whence we came, guys from New York and elsewhere, 
why did God choose you, choose me, to be here for this time? I'm asking your elders to pray for us as we seek to be faithful to God and this work. And we thank you for your commitment to the Lord. God, God bless you. Praise God. Good evening. Good evening. Last year, I found out about the School of the Prophets that would be having a program in uh, Tennessee. I wanted to attend, however, I was unable to do that. Towards the end of the year, I found out that uh, these guys were coming into town to have a School of the Prophets in Atlanta. So that in itself has been a great blessing. Because my wife was in school last year, she would not have been able to attend the program yes. with me. Yes. And this year, of course, she's not, so she was able to attend with me. Amen. So that was a great blessing. What I take away from this is a clearer understanding of the sanctuary. Psalm 77, 13 says, Thy way, O Lord. In the sanctuary. Amen. And I thank God that I got a clearer understanding. Now we know what it takes to finish the work. Amen. 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 Good evening, brothers and sisters. I I just don't know where to start at this time. But standing here, looking back where I am coming from, I know that the Lord loves me. Amen. He has done wonderful things in my life. Amen. And I make up my mind to follow him all the way. I plan in last year, December, to go to Jamaica. That's where I'm from. Amen. And uh, my brother Lincoln, he told me about um, this session will be coming in town. So I defile my mind now to cut my visit chart in Jamaica to come back to this class. My brothers and sisters, I am a brother who live in the world. I study my Bible daily. And I think I know. <laughs> but coming to this school of prophecy, man, I learn a lot more than what I think I know. So my brothers and sister, and brother Jeremiah, I thank God for you and Helder, Mason. I thank God for you all. And uh, I decide my mind to visit a next prophecy class. May God bless you all. Amen. Good evening. Good evening. I could tell a testimony that would last for probably three or four hours. Um, in the last couple of years, my wife and I have been through an awful lot, financially and otherwise. And I tell you what, God has an amazing plan if you listen. I found myself in North Dakota, and I'm really jumping ahead in this story quite a ways. But I found myself in North Dakota because I realized I wanted our family to be out of debt. We've heard time and time again to camp meeting. I went to the school of the prophet the first time they had it, and I knew I had to be out of debt. House paid for, house sold, debts gone, whatever. Work dried up here in Atlanta. A good friend of mine and I took off to North Dakota. And I couldn't figure out why I was here except to make money, pay debt, and then get back home with, with my wife. But God had another plan for me that Amen. I had no idea. Amen. No, no idea. 
In Williston, North Dakota, where I'm working right now, every wind of doctrine is flying around the church. Mm. Every wind of doctrine. If you can think it, it's happening. Branch Davidians, um, Charles Wheeling, you can go on and on and on. And I learned from the first school of the prophets that if you're walking the walk, if you hear something that's false, you will recognize it immediately. And so I recognized Charles Wheeling was a bad apple, plain and simple. I also realized that there were precious souls in that church. I realized that the leaders, though they may be bad apples through Christ, they can come right back in the faith. Amen. And so I determined to, to make myself available in any kind of ministry that, would, that they would accept me. I started teaching Sabbath school class with another um, teacher and started a Bible study in the afternoon, Sabbath afternoons. I met a man by the name of Woodrow Savine. And I asked him, I said, do you want to study? Do you want to study present truth? Mm. He said, yes, I do. I do want to study. I said, well, I'll tell you what. There's a school of prophets that's going to come down to Atlanta. I gave him the dates. I didn't tell him who was going to be teaching. Amen. I just said, if you want to learn present truth, you need to be here. Now, mind you, he's traveled across Montana to hear various preachers He's been in Adventist for four years. He's looking for present truth. Well, I'll tell you what. I brought him with me this week. Amen. He's going to be speaking next. But he has been so amazed at what he's heard. He has a heart for this. We've been talking and we're trying to find ways of making this happen more than just here in Atlanta. Yeah. The one thing I learned, well, I learned many things, but one thing I learned was that the devil's been planning for 6,000 years for this final, mm, mm, mm. final test. And the false theology being preached right now in all the churches is going to take us straight to hell. Mm. You catch that? Straight to hell. We have to know this present truth. We have to be ready by the NSL, National Sunday Law. If we're not, why are we Seventh-day Adventist? Pray for myself, Woody, and the church in Williston. Also pray for these brothers, Jeremiah and Moses. The devil is going to work on them harder than ever before. This has been the best school of prophets that I've known about. And it's going to get better. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Good evening, everybody, and happy Sabbath. What's left of it? <laughs> I have a little scripture here I'd like to share with everybody that has really touched my heart. Psalm chapter 40, verse 6. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not require, desire. Mine eyes hast thou opened, my ears hast thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Then lo, then said I, lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me, I delight to do thy will, O God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. And it comes, to, I, I read this part, sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire, my, and so on and so forth. And God doesn't want us going through the motions of religion. That's what I was doing. I was baptized and raised in the Association of Free Lutheran Churches, and uh, everybody goes to heaven when you die. And uh, I was around that for a good share of my life, and then I moved to Oklahoma City and um, attended a Baptist church there and heard their doctrines 
And then I spent some time in Dallas at a non-denominational charismatic church there. And uh, my um, uh, sister and brother-in-law have an Assembly of God church in Miami, Florida. So I've been exposed to all kinds of stuff. And all the way through this, listening to these doctrines, I get these red flags. Is this true? Is this truth? And um, in 2007, I started dating a gal who was a Seventh-day Adventist. And I was away from the church at that time. And so uh, she was painting my house for me out at my farmstead. And uh, I said, well, you're going to come out on Saturday and paint. And she says, no, that's the Sabbath. I don't work on the Sabbath. Oh, OK. So a couple of weeks went by, and I got started thinking about it. And so I said, well, um, I said to myself, I need to get back with it. And uh, so I asked her if I could go to church with her. And she says, my goodness, Woody, I'm usually having to ask people to go to church with me. And here you are <laughs> wanting to go to church. <laughs> So I ended Amen. up um, attending, and they were pretty decent about it. They didn't shove anything down my throat. And um, then uh, I started attending a church in Williston, and uh, they were a little more aggressive about it, thank goodness, thank God. And um, one gal asked me, or I asked a gal one day, um, I sure would like to find a group to study the Bible with, and she promptly gave me her phone number, and said, whenever you're ready. I thought, thought about this for about two or three days, and I, man, I better get with it. So we sat down and on Monday evening for two hours, and Wednesday evening for two hours, and Sabbath afternoon for two hours, and started going through the book, um, uh, Bible Readings for the Home. And I found out about the state of the dead and the, the Sabbath and things that these other denominations they, they can't hold the candle to it. They, they just don't seem to get it. And so I've been blessed by coming to the Adventist church. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. 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 Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Where shall I begin? I know I have to keep it short. In short, I'm a nursing student pursuing my BS. And um, since 2009, I've never failed a class. And I went to I uh, attend Mercer University. And I passed everything with flying colors. And you know, my family, especially my husband, I <laughs> think they want me to pursue this career, but I figure, you know, I can, I can help because I'm at home and I, I do nothing all day. And my husband just, bless his heart, he just wants to take care of me. And I, I mean, I, just to come home and see me there just makes him happy. Amen. He just, <laughs> I don't get it, but that's it. I was like, for 22 years, do you just want to look at me? You know, so, you know, in... <laughs> So in pursuing this, this, um, this nursing career, I thought I had it down packed. They had a prayer room. I was, I was you know, taking you know, advantage of the prayer room. And I was, everyone is like, Marvia, you're not going to study. It's the Sabbath. We got to get together. We got to get this. This is a hard test. And I'm like, no, I don't study on the Sabbath. And I get to explain to them why I've even had the opportunity of explaining to 150 students because God allowed me the opportunity to explain them about what the Sabbath is all about. And so I end up failing this class with flying colors, everything else. Mm. But this one class, keep getting the same number on the test. And I didn't understand why. I had to be here for such a time as this. And Amen. I would not have Amen. traded for the world. Amen. You Amen. see, I've been an Adventist for almost, what, 19 years? Thought I knew what I was supposed to do. I didn't even, I, I mean, I, I got to understand your roots. If, if you don't know who you are, how can you know where you're going? Um, I, um, let me um, read something in here from, from, I don't want to take up the time. But um, Proverbs uh, 29 and verse 18 says, where there is no vision, yes. the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. 
Who are we? Yes. What are we about? Mm. Are we here to play church? Are we here to um, play games with, with our lives while the enemy sits back and laugh at us? Are we here to vindicate God's character? So with that I say, God has given us a vision through the prophet E.G. White. Don't let her book sit on the shelf and collect dust. Let us not lay down in our stupor and allow the devil to take our souls and laugh at us and gain any victory of our lives. Be blessed. I'm so glad that God is wanting to work with us. What do you say? Brother Davis, Brother Mason, thank you very much. This week has been the week of the gathering and preparation for me. The gathering that I've never heard in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I've been indifferent. The last thing I've been into was the Rastafarian movement. Brother Dwayne, <laughs> yes. I've learned the health message a little in the Rastafarian. They're vegetarians. Oh, yeah. I ate raw food for a number of years. And then when I came to this country, I went back to eating all sorts of stuff. Coming into this, I thank God for my wife who grew up at this church. And when I would come home from the parties, she would just get on her knees and pray, unequal yoke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank God yeah. for this school. Thank you, Brother Moses, for telling me you have to get it. You must get it. I haven't got it all. I tell you, to get it all, you have to be here over and over and over again. Thank you, Brother Davis, for saying that I have to be a baby. But I tell you, I've learned that I'm a baby on my knees crawling for my mother's breast. Thank God for this food. Thank you all for your encouragement, those who from my uh, church, and thank my son, Calvin, Kevin, and my daughter, Vanetta, for the encouragement and mocking me when I go home. Not, not in a bad way, but on Moses, they can see the glory. But I know they've truly seen it. Thank you all. Amen. Before we go further, we want to recognize that the sun has set. And as we continue the testimonies, we want to just acknowledge that. Amen. Would you reverently kneel with me as we thank God? Father, we're getting a foretaste of heaven. What is it going to be like when we go to heaven? And on that sea of glass, listen as the billions upon billions testify of the blood of Jesus. May not one of us be missing, dear God. Thank you for the Sabbath that has come, we're sad to see it go. But dear God, we pray that you will prepare us for the next, that truly we might be a part of that team that finishes your work. And abide with us as we continue this testimony service and commencement, uh, commencement service. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I, uh, I want to thank... Uh, Pastor Davis and uh, Elder Mason for allowing Jesus Christ to so influence their lives and live through them and that they are dedicated and selfless to Christ because that's how we all should be. And this week to me has, has meant many things as far as God revealing where he's been throughout the 20 years that I've been a Seventh-day Adventist and all the mercies and, and grace. Amen. And I just want to encourage everybody to focus on the sanctuary, study the sanctuary. Most of all, give your hearts to Jesus completely. Amen. Let him transform your character and do not think that you can wait until the last minute. God can do things, but he needs us throughout. We need to be willing to give our lives to him. And so I just pray that Christ will just so much being 
each of you to, to awaken each of you to see that time is short. And I just give Christ the glory. Amen. 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 We're giving all the glory to God. I'm sure Elder Mason, if he was here, he would tell you the same. And just because we're teaching this doesn't make us any different. We need Jesus more than anyone out there. But as a team, we can finish this work. To God be the glory. Um, good afternoon. I have been a seven-day Adventist all my life. Um, my parents um, brought me in the church, and they were, I'm actually third-generation seven-day Adventist. And this week has been so instrumental in growing me and giving me purpose. Um, I, the first two days, I was very disturbed and very discouraged because I was like, Lord, I have wasted so much precious time mm -hmm. and nothing that is eternal. I could not account for the time that I have wasted. And I just had to hold on to the promise that God would redeem that time if, Amen. if I applied myself. And so I, I come out of the school with the firm desire and decision to spend time with Jesus Amen. and Amen. to be grounded in what I believe. Amen. Because I know that if, if time would close for me today, if I had to give a testimony of what I believed, I would fail the test. Mm -hmm. But I know that God is faithful. Amen. And uh, um, I have never been more proud of being a Seventh-day Adventist Amen. than when I walked out this school. And I know that God will, will do a miracle in me. Amen. Because Amen. I, as I studied this week, I was like, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to grasp all this. I have no idea how I'm going to learn all this. But I know that you have given me the desire, and I'm going to act on that. Amen. And so I pray that God gives each one of you the desire to um, know who you are and what you stand for. Yeah. And that um, he gives you the assurance that he can do yeah. a great work in your lives. Yeah. And um, and that he will finish the work that he started. Amen. Amen. I don't get too emotional. I praise God for this week. It has renewed my faith. Amen. In the Seventh Day Adventist message, and indeed, it is time to finish the work. Okay. But the work that is most important is the work that the Lord does in your own life mm -hmm. to change that life that we are without spot or wrinkle mm -hmm. and are ready to give this message to the world. Amen. 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 The sun is setting. Uh, happy Sabbath. Um, 51 years ago, I was born into this, this Seventh-day Adventist church. And 26 years ago, I had a friend of mine who knew the spirit of prophecy. And he always would tell me, read the books, read the books. And then when I met Brother Lemon in 20, uh, 2009, he says, you got homework. And I'm like, okay. So it was in the spirit of prophecy. Go do the homework. So I say, well, Chris kept beating me up, saying, you need to come to the school. So I come to the school, and I begin to do more homework. And then you get, like, scared if they're going to call on you because you might not know the answer. <laughs> and I'm the type of guy, you know, I like to know the answer. So, but I just couldn't get the answer. And what this school does is it opened my mind to what God wants me to do, and that's to finish the work. Not only me, but my wife and my children. Amen. Thank you. Amen.
Good evening. Good evening. You know, one of the things we talked about this week was laying a solid foundation. That foundation was actually implanted in me growing up in the faith. But I didn't build on it. I left the church, my mother and every, everyone, and I went out into the world. I came back to the faith in 1997. I stayed for about three years in the faith. It just didn't feel right. So I left and I came back. I went back out into the world, came back in 2002. It still didn't feel right. But I hang on because there's something telling me to stay there. And last year, in May, I went to the School of the Prophets up in Tennessee. And I tell you what, I had an overload in my brain. <laughs> because all the dust came off. You know, so it's time to build. And I started building. Amen. Amen. And I came back this week, and it's a lot clearer. Amen. All the dust went away. You know, and now we have a work to do Amen. and a short time to do it. Yes. And my encouragement for everyone here tonight who has not been to one to get yourself there. There's a lot to learn, a lot for us to do. We're not being fed, and we as the common people have to do it. Yes. Thanks. Yes. Amen. Good evening, everyone. This twenty dollars on the it's staying, it's staying there. That oh, gentleman okay. has a testimony. All right, okay. Just saying, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm like, okay. She's not being tempted. All We're right. not going to. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. Oh wow. Well, first of all, let me just say, um, when they started promoting the School of the Prophets, um, I, I had no in intentions of coming, and then God said to me, "I want you to be there," and I said, "Okay." You know, um, because I went to the upper room camp meeting for the first time this summer, and it changed my life. Amen. It changed my life. And I came back home calling my old church friends. Hey, come on, come on. We're going to have this Bible study. Come find out why you're seven-day Adventist. Mm -hmm. Come, come, come. So we have a Bible study in our home from that. But one of the reasons why I did not want to come, you all, because it, it was just so much. It was beautiful, though. And all, but I, I just thought the School of the Prophets would just be just too much so overwhelming because these brothers they hit you hard okay they hit you hard okay elder mason um um but i gotta say it was beautiful it was beautiful okay and i learned some things you know i came in 17 years ago i was part of that number let's just bring them on in but the, to know what the pillars of our faith was i couldn't tell you until i went to the upper room camp meeting and then they got in more depth with it here and it was just amazing Okay, I mean, and even one of the things, the book of the law on the side of the covenant, something that little I did not know. Mm. Okay, and all, and then to study Revelation 11 and find out about the French Revolution and all like that. It was just so amazing. And I was just beautiful. But one thing I just got to touch on, where's Elder Mason? Just before it was lunchtime, he would always start talking about appetite. <laughs> And I mean, being a, a thick girl that's on her way down. Amen. Um, Amen. But I just want to give praises to the Lord because January the 1st, the, a few friends and I, we um, did like a 10 day cleanse. And then we started a 30 day raw after that. And I, you know, I'm just thinking we're just doing it just to work on the weight, right? But you know what? God was clearing my mind to Amen. be here. Amen. Because my mind did not wander. Yes. I was able yes. to listen to them and stay present. Yes. And I yes. just wanted that appetite we got. And I also found out it's just not us thick girls that love food. Amen. Yes. All right, so we all got to work on that, yes. all of it. We got to overcome, okay? Thank y'all. <laughs> yes. She's making it plain, amen. Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> I am so grateful, thankful for what I have learned these five days. Mm. Mm. What was so amazing was that every time I brought my testimonies with me in one volume, and every time they call a testimony five, 
two, three, I turned right to it. And I had already read it. I had it marked and dated. And I'm like, Lord, how is it I've forgotten all of this? This school of the prophet has taken me back to my first love. Amen. Amen. My first love, church, was the Bible yeah. and the spirit of prophecy. Yes. When I came in this church, I was introduced to the spirit of prophecy. They gave me a spirit of prophecy guide in class. Back in 1976, they did that. And I love the spirit of prophecy. And I love the word of God. And I would spend 18 hours a day studying studying and meditating and studying i came in this church became a little too evangelist sold the books got them real cheap and read them i can turn in the day they marked and dated marked and dated now i slip back stop reading nobody in the church says anything about the spirit of prophecy Sabbath school open study nobody says anything about the spirit of prophecy i said lord you have called me back to my first love. Amen. I want to thank you all for allowing the Holy Spirit to use you to convert me this week. Yes. I thank God, folks. I could just say, hold my mule, let me shout. I'm so happy. Thank you. Praise God. Spirit of Prophecy says this is one place when you come to the cross, where the poor formless must stand aside and rejoice at what God has done. Good afternoon, church. Amen. I'm so scared right now. That I did not know we had to all come up here and say anything. Amen. <laughs> Don't know where to begin, but I give God praise and thanks. Um, last year was the worst year of my life. I've mm. been through a whole lot. Mm. I lost my son. Mm. And... Moses Mason came to our church, Mount Pisgah, and when he, when he introduced, give a fly about the um, school of the prophet, I, um, I look at it and I said, I got to be here. Because when my son passed away, I said, Lord, I felt free now. So I was like, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I will do. Yeah. Wherever you want me to go, because now it's just, I have, was four boys, so now it's three of us. Three children and my son. So I was like, I'm so ready to do your will. So when the school of the prophet came out, I was like, I have to do this. And I asked for time off of my work without pay. And I was like, it doesn't matter to me. I have to be here this Amen. week. I missed Monday because I was out of town. And I felt so discouraged. But I was like, Lord, I'm still going to be here anyway, you know. And I was so blessed. And I know what I have to do now. Because I asked the Lord before, Lord, whatever you have me to do, I'm ready to do. And I know I have a work to do now. I have to finish the work. Yeah. So I pray by God's grace that we all will finish the work. Let's keep holding on. Amen. Because we have but a short <clears throat> time. Amen. Have a blessed day. Amen. My name is Maribel, and um, I've been in the church for about 15 years. And uh, unfortunately, well, when I came into the church, no one taught me how to study the Bible. But uh, it has been a growing experience. But now that I'm here, the Lord has really shown me, although I had understood a little bit about the proof texting method, I had not understood it until I came here and I could see clearly how this could be done, how I could um, study according to the Bible, um, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. And I thank God for that. Amen. Because now, instead of being on breast milk, I can have real meat. Amen. 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 And another thing that I understood about, you know, about victory over sin. I didn't understand how this could be done, but then when I came here, I could see it clearly, Amen. and it is in the sanctuary. Amen. We must go into the sanctuary yes. to see this truth, yes. to have victory over sin. So praise Amen. the Lord for that. Amen. Elder Mason, did you hear that? Amen. <laughs> Hello, everyone.
everyone. My name is Juanita and I live in Silver Spring, Maryland. As you know, that's not too far from the General Conference. And I go to a church where a lot of our leaders attend and I've never heard this message in that church. So I knew when I heard, um, well, actually I should say I have to acknowledge that being here is a miracle. Uh, if it were not for Sister Vilma for sending me the flyer, I would not be here. And even before I got that information, um, the Lord impressed me in, on December 27th, you know, to go raw. So I've been eating raw since then, and I know now why. You know, so I could listen to these messages Amen. and be able to internalize it. And now I need to go back and share it with my family. And I know it's not going to be easy, yeah. so please pray for me. Yes. But I praise God Amen. for this message. Praise Thank God. you. Praise God. Good evening, saints. Good evening. I have to say it's been such a wonderful blessing to be here, and it's been a renewal for me. Um, I haven't been going to church recently. I was baptized oh, in 1958, so I've mm. been an Adventist of sorts at times with all my passion, at times not so much. And... Um, this past Sunday, I had spent the weekend kind of hiding away. I knew that there were meetings in Atlanta, but I, there was something making me resist. Well, last Saturday night, um, I went on the internet to check some emails and I saw I had an email from Brother Holland, which he had sent days before and I just it just hadn't caught my attention and there was information about the school of the prophets and um, an invitation for me to come and this was pretty late at night and um, I emailed him back and I thought about it and prayed about it and I had a restless night and I woke up in the morning about um, Sunday morning about um, 6 15 6 20 and the first thing I did was to go to the computer and look and there was a message from Brother Holland inviting me again and reassuring me that there was a place for me mm. and uh, I was just thrilled and so encouraged and thanks to him and his sweet wife Tiffany uh, I was able to be here for the School of Prophecy. Mm. And like the other sister said, um, I'll have to tell you something a little bit more. Uh, in the beginning of the year, the first of the year, uh, I decided that I was going to read the Bible through, mm. which I've never done in that manner. And so I um, found this 90-day plan to read the Bible, and I've been reading that. and. As far as I've gotten so far, there was a lot that you all talked about here, uh, about the sanctuary and and you know all of God's love and detail and how He taught Moses and how that came to being. And so, the things most impressed me here, first of all, was the broad concept of time and how God from eternity mm -hmm. and through the ages has brought us to this time. Yes. And in just going back and looking at some of the Spirit of Prophecy books that I have, um, like the other sister, I, I had read and underscored and made comments, and it is again a renewal to my soul. Mm -hmm. And I just want to be a part of this last day message Amen. and help others to know and to sound the warning and yes. to let the blessings come in. Amen. 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 Praise God. Good evening. My name is Vilma Myers and this is the second school of the prophets for me. 
After the first school of prophets, actually on the second day, I said to Brother Davis, I am so confused. I said, I'm not going to get it. He goes, no, no, you're good to get it. So by the third day, I started understanding everything. At the end of the school of the prophets, I was just rejoicing. I was praising the Lord for what he was doing through Brother, da uh, Brother Davis and Brother Mason. I learned that the sanctuary was the heartbeat of our doctrine, and that heart was stopped through our seminaries. I learned that we can be have the victory over sin by the seed planted within our hearts. Yes. Brothers and sisters, I learned that in Hebrews 11, 39, and 40, that we have to vindicate the Father's name, yeah. or else there will be no victory. I mean, there will be no, um, the, the, the righteous will not be risen, okay? So we do have a work to do, and I just want to praise the Lord. I want to thank Brother Chris and his wife for all that they've done, and I want to praise the Lord for what he's doing through Brother Davis and Brother Mason. Praise Actually, after the first school, I went home, and uh, Sister Maribel, Sister Mona, um, and several, I think we started out with like four or five people, right, Maribel, in my Bible study at home. Four or five? Yes. And then I started, I, I'm the superintendent of my church, and I wouldn't go with the Sabbath school lesson. I would always do something on the sanctuary, <laughs> something on the three angels' message that if Genesis 3.15 doesn't happen, it, yeah. uh, I mean, if uh, the, the serpent's head cannot be crushed unless the sanctuary is cleansed, and the sanctuary cannot be cleansed, unless Revelation 14, 6, to, uh, 6 and 7 <laughs> happens, amen? And so I started preaching this, and a person that I looked up so much to, she, at the end of the month when I got done with Sabbath school super, and she goes, I have never knew all these things. And I was like, praise the Lord that I had the opportunity to be able to share this. Yes. Actually, after my superintendent reports, my class started increasing. And by, the, by before I came here, we had 10 people in my class. Amen. So every Sabbath afternoon, we meet at 4.30. And so I just praise the Lord for that. Now I came here the second time. And the school of the prophets is not the same. I said to my husband, I said, it's amazing. The Lord has blessed so tremendously. And I truly feel like brothers and sisters on this side, each one of you, there did actually two people that came with me, they said, I don't have the money. I have to go this and this. I said, you know what? I don't care what the money is. None of it is worth it if we lose out. I said, this school of the prophet is worth more than any money in this world. Because this school of the prophet is going to show us the truth that's been hidden from us. Mm. And so, brothers and sisters, I want to encourage each of you, please make the opportunity, make the time to come to the school of the prophets because it is life. It's a matter of life and death. Amen. Amen. Good evening. Good evening. My wife and I came to the School of the Prophets, and um, we were invited, and thank you so much, uh, the Hollands, for making that possible for us to come here. Initially, uh, like my brother Mike back there, I was kind of yes, no, yes, no, maybe so in coming. That's kind of actually how I came into the church. I've been a Seventh-day Adventist for 15-plus years now, and I just want to say and encourage all of you that whenever you hear a message like the, the loud cry, uh, things that we hear from the spirit of prophecy. It's a small, almost what I've likened to a, like a breadcrumb. You know, you go down a trail, you've heard the expression of leaving breadcrumbs to find your way back. But the Lord has led in my life in ways that I would spend hours telling you. But having come here, and I want to give the glory to God yes. for allowing him to encouraged me to come here because initially, like I said, I was very reluctant. A lot of things are calling for me to get things done and so forth, but the Lord was so gracious in uh, permitting us to come and just reaffirming me. As I came into the church, I hadn't heard much of the spirit of prophecy. I came into the church without one Bible study. And I just want to encourage you to not let that happen again. And I want to pass that blessing along. And just one last thing before I finish. Just today, um, we were here for the whole week. We had to go back yesterday. We're about two hours away in Alabama. Just today, I started um, giving this message in Amen. my sermons. Amen. <laughs> and it was almost like what Elder Mason was saying, something about the cold water and the hydrotherapy. That's what we do at Living Springs, by the way. We've done, done a lot of that hot, cold thing. And it was like a hot, cold experience that when I gave that message today, it was like the whole, it was not a very big church. I think you visited there. The whole place just came alive. It was like a night and day experience. Amen. And people there now Amen. want to carry this thing on and Amen. to do studies. Amen. And I emphasize the sanctuary because when I first came into this church as a former Catholic, 
the sanctuary galvanized it for mm, me. Mm, it mm. absolutely got, when, when the pastor gave me the, or gave us, it was a Wednesday night prayer meeting. He gave us this uh, series on the sanctuary. Every night I was there, every Wednesday night I wept mm. because of why, I was thinking, why have I never heard this before? Mm. And it just galvanized me. So give this message in its entirety. Amen. Thank you and praise God. Amen. Thank you. I just want to thank the Lord, too. Um, my husband and I were very grateful to be here, and it's just been an inspiration. I've had the privilege of growing up in the church, but it's been a beautiful to hear how it has been expressed this week through the spirit of prophecy, the Bible, the doctrines, the, the pillars of our faith. You know, we can take so much for granted, and these books are on our shelves. The Bible is ours, and we just... The, what it impressed me the most is recognizing the urgency of the time, recognizing the work he has to do in my life, yeah. and what he wants us to do for others. Amen. Blessings to you all. Um, I think I'm very great. I'm actually very blessed because God has done and keeps continuing to do marvelous things in my life. Um, I'm probably the only one that hasn't been here this week for the School of Prophecy, but I have been so, how do I say, the motivated because I know my sister-in-law has come, and when you when she come, she would come home and she would say what I learned, and, and I remember when my brother went to the first one, he was on fire, Brother Davis. I go. couldn't have that brother just be quiet whenever somebody would come into our house, and they would come, you know, for Sabbath afterwards to eat, and and I'd be scared, you know, to let that guy sit next to my brother. But, you know, because he was like, look, and I got him, like, baby steps, brother, baby steps. But he was on fire. And, yeah. and that fire, brothers and sisters, is the most amazing thing that we should have. Not by emotion, but because we, God is so good to me. Yeah. And, and, and the fact that I had, I remember when I spoke to you um, on the first one, when I found out that I had a tumor the size of a soccer ball yeah. in my uterus. I'm 32 years old, and I don't have any children. And when they told me about it, um, they say 98% can it's cancer. Mm. So I'm actually thankful to God for it yeah. because he actually um, made me see that I need to trust in God. Sometimes yeah. we, we preach about it, we tell people about it, but we don't know it until we actually experience it. Yeah. And I tell you guys, after Brother Davis and everybody that was at the School of Prophets prayed for me that day, I had never felt such a peace in my heart like I did that day. Mm. And I said, you know what, God, if it is cancer, praise the Lord, because yeah. you're going to use me to show other people what you can do for them. Yeah. So I was so thrilled, and I said, you know, people going into uh, pre-op, you're 32, you, do you have any kids? No, and they're like, well, they're going to do a hysterectomy. I said, yeah what's wrong with you? I said, God's in control. Yeah. And I thank God. And, and my sister-in-law told me that she ordered the, the, um, the seminars that you guys had given this evening. And I'm actually blessed to say that in our Spanish church, I was given the opportunity to teach the kids from 10 to 12. And I actually brought in the, the book, Ransom and Reunion. Praise God. Because I... Uh, a lot of ki people say, no, they're kids. They won't understand. Let me tell you, those kids, that first day, a little 10-year-old girl told me, she said to me, she said, you know what's amazing about this? That actually God has a plan for me. Amen. And he made me for a special reason. And, and it's just amazing for a 10-year-old to say that to me. Yeah. So I ask you guys to keep us in prayer. Um, I pray that Brother Davis and Brother Moses will learn Spanish, but I don't think that's ever going to be possible anytime soon. But um, hopefully those uh, tapes can be translated so that we also may be able to uh, get that, that wonderful Amen. word of God that, that we have to spread out, guys. Amen. And just keep us in prayer. And God bless. Right. The gift of tongues is coming. Amen. Amen. We can be recipients. I, by nature... I am not an outgoing person. <laughs> I thank the Lord for sending me a God-fearing wife who's outgoing. In uh, 2012, the week before Thanksgiving, 
my wife mentioned to me, she wanted to hear Brother Jeremiah. The day of Thanksgiving, I get to my mother's house, there's a Messengers of Light newsletter with two flyers waiting for us. <clears throat> so needless to say, we ended up going to the uh, Revival Sabbath, and my wife asked me if I was going to uh, School of the Prophets. Well, I said yes, because the Lord, through my mother, said, this envelope has been waiting for you for weeks. Hmm. So, hmm. and I thank the Lord for sending me here so I can go and teach my family and friends this message. Amen. Amen. Good evening, church. That's what I usually say when I get up. <laughs> My heart's beating so hard. Um, there's not a time like this before in Earth's history. And as Esther was called, you are called. <laughs> um, what can I say? But, folks, I can take the word and I can open up now in the spirit of prophecy. And I see things that I didn't see before. Mm. And I know it has to be the Holy Spirit. Yes. Now, I know you've had some struggles this week, right? Mm. I've had struggles this week. And I found out that the only way through those struggles is if you put them in the hands of the Lord. Amen. And so... Um, He's got a plan for all of us. He's destined for us before we were ever born or you wouldn't be here. And he's going to carry us through to the end. So don't forget that and hang on. And we're going through, right? Amen. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Um... Before I came to the School of the Prophets, I thought I knew what seven-day Adventist meant. I really didn't. We got to finish the work. Mm. That's why God called, called every one of us. I was praying, asking the Lord. I knew that that was something that he wanted me to do, but I didn't know what it was. But now I know. Mm. And I want to praise the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. Hello. My name is Zaida, and my sister-in-law just recently spoke. I didn't feel like I could come because I felt pretty bad that I couldn't come to all the meetings. I could talk a lot about all the things that happened, but that's not important. All I want to say is, my husband went to the first school, the prophet, and I was very upset. I was about to give birth, and I thought my husband was insane of leaving me. <laughs> and I was insane with all of you that kept saying you needed to come, and I'm like, don't they see I'm about to pop? <laughs> and who's gonna care for me, you know, and the selfish of me? kept saying that, you know, he was just losing it now. And, um, and, but we were not in the same page because I wasn't fed like he was. And he kept going to all these meetings. I always stayed behind until camp meeting. And when he said to go to camp meeting, I was like, oh, torture again, me handling the kids, and I can't get nothing. And he said, no, we're going. I said, no, it's not no use. Just you go, you go. He's like, no, we're going to go, and I'm going to handle the kids. Mm. And he did. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he did, and I was overwhelmed. And when the School of the Prophet uh, came, uh, um, it didn't even cross my mind. I was still dull. I'm glad I did because the few parts that I was able to get, it was what meant for me. Amen. And I'm very encouraged, and if any couples here... I encourage them to be fed together. Amen. It's Amen. needed so we can walk the walk together. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. My sister-in-law forgot to say one thing. It was not cancer, and she didn't have to have a total hysterectomy. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. 
We can say amen. 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 I'm Maggie Mason. I never do this. This is totally out of character, but I'm up here by my son here. You know, I lived with Moses 44 years. Amen. And as he was teaching this time, and as my son Jeremiah was teaching this time, I saw the difference in both of them. Mm. I saw how they had grown. But I said, Lord, not this time. I'm not going to be a ma uh, not going to be a Martha. No. I'm not going to be in the kitchen cooking. I'm not going to be doing. I'm coming to this class. Mm. And oh Lord, what it have done for me. Mm. Nobody can tell you until you come yourself right. how you need to get into the sanctuary. Yes. So I want my life to be patterned yes. after the sanctuary. Yes. I want to grow. Yes. This have started my growth. To another level, because yes. I, you know, I always try to do what the Lord said, but this is, this is a must. Yes. You must attend, or you must get your life together with these tapes. Mm. You got to get in the sanctuary. Yes. We have to be saved. We don't have long. That's I've got a son to meet. Mm. I got to get him up out Amen. of that grave. I'm Amen. working on it. Because the last thing he said to me yes. was Jesus is Lord. Yes. Mama, you taught me, didn't you? Yes. I said, from now on, I will live for God. Amen. And it's just making me love him so much. Yes. You, know, it's, you know that thing that happened in you? You can't explain. Well, that's what's happening to me Amen. right now. Amen. Amen. This is my queen, praise God. <laughs> I'm thankful that I was here this week. And what I learned more than anything else is how to go back and have, a, have my own personal time with God. Amen. And sometimes it's a little bit difficult. Even this week, I'd wake up at 5, and I'd get down there, and I'd try to pray, and then this little fingers would start touching me. <laughs> Mommy? Can we pray together? <laughs> and um, I praise the Lord that Amaya and I were able to sit through the school of the prophets and not just be an observant, but participate. Yeah. And I really love Jesus, but coming here, I realize that I don't love him as I should. Yeah. And finishing the work is not just a statement that everyone's saying. Yeah. God's character is on trial. Yeah. And if I don't live for Christ every single day of my life, then Satan can look at Christ and say, see, mm. your blood meant nothing. Mm. It mm. did nothing for her. But me living victoriously over every single bad habit and everything that I've inherited from my parents and their parents and just getting down on my knees and saying, God, take this and put Jesus in me yeah. will vindicate to Satan and the entire universe that Jesus' blood is powerful. Amen. And it can overcome the most wicked sin that Satan can plant in our hearts. And I'm just so grateful that this week I was empowered to know that Jesus' seed is in me. Amen. It's not a fairy tale. And me living victorious for Christ is going to prove that that seed is potent. Yeah. And I just praise God for everything. Amen. Wait, 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 wait. Come back up here again. I don't come down. That's, and that's a queen, amen? When we treat our women like queens, and they know who they are, it makes a difference. I'm so glad to have a wife, amen? I'm so glad to have a mother. I'm so glad if we just did this more and more, do you know what would happen? This world would never be the same. 
And without a Seventh-day Adventist even doing an evangelistic meeting, the world would run into our church. They say, where can we get a marriage like heaven? They don't have wedding bands, but their homes are still together. Something else is binding them. They find something better, and that better is Jesus. I just want to say what a blessing this has been this week. Uh, as the Lord impressed upon all of our hearts that we needed to do something in this area. Uh, we didn't know how it was going to take place, but God has been faithful. Uh, he provided this building. He provided means for us to be able to have this school here and to hear all these testimonies that have come before you this evening uh, encourages my heart. Amen. And uh, there's just so many. I know we could talk all night, but it's been a tremendous blessing. Amen. So at this particular time, we're going to hand out a certificate of completion. And then we also learned about communion with Jesus this week. And I know there's a special book called Desire of Ages. And we're going to give you all a very special copy of that book to go home with. Amen. And that you can begin your communion this evening. So at this time, we're going to begin uh, handing out the certificates along with the books. And we're going to invite Brother Lloyd Backus to come forward. And as you come forward, you'll come across the top and come back. God bless you, brother. Thank you. Appreciate you. All right, Brother Roy Bain. Sister Carol Bakersky. Elder Daniel Bush. <laughs> Brother Dorian Bush. Sister Mona Daly. Sister Zaida Douglas. Sister Mona. Elder Narlin Edwards. Sister Samantha Edwards. Dr. Gary Euler. Sister Cynthia Euler. Sister Natalie Francis. Brother Desi French. Sister Maxine French. Sister Maribel Gonzalez. Sister Juanita Gopala Rao. Sister Angelina Gutierrez. Sister Arvella Hadley. Brother Howard Henry. Brother Brian Hill.
sister Cindy here. Brother Emery Horn. Sister Cheryl Hubbard. Brother Sefton Hudson. Brother Herbert Jackson. Sister Myrtle Lee. Well, she may not be here tonight. I'll see her. Brother Mauricio Marquez. Sister Tricia Mashburn. Brother Rafael Moreno. I don't think he's here. Sister Vilma Myers. Sister Ruby Perry. Brother Larry and Sister Naomi Parea, close. Paralia. Brother Paul Peterson Punch. <laughs> Pastor Herbert Pahoka. Brother Abraham and Sister Marvia Remator. Sister Kathy Rutherford. <laughs> Brother John Robertson. Brother Augustine Salcedo. Sister Deborah Smith. Sister Armani Smith. Brother Woodrow Savin. Amen. Brother Michael Tatey. Brother Gene Verlis. Brother Michael Verlis. Brother Bruce Walker. You know, Mom, I stand beside you. I can't make it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just standing beside you.
Amen. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Sister Rochelle Willis. Brother Myron Walters. Brother Paul Wilson. Brother Robert Wright. Sister Beverly Young. All right. Well, we've got quite the large family up here. Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. Their certificate reads, the School of the Prophets Certificate of Completion. This is to certify that the individual's name has successfully completed a five-day training school. And we're very thankful for what has taken place this week. We want to invite one other individual to come forward who's part of that family, Brother Jared. We'd like for you to come forward. Amen. Amen. Brother Jeremiah. Amen. Brother Amen. Jeremiah. Brother Jared is part of the Dunwoody Community Church. He began with us last week on Thursday. I think he's put in about 12 hours a day. Uh, he came in and helped us set up everything we needed from the sound to the video chairs, tables, and uh, he has been a tremendous blessing to us. This would have never would have happened uh, without him. Special thanks for Christian service provided during the five-day training school. Amen. So we're going to invite you to join the family on the platform and as we have a moment of dedication and prayer for the students. I am filled up, that's all I can say. Amen. Um, since we have started these schools, since we've had these meetings, I've always wanted to have this kind of success. Amen. And God has really given us success this time. I believe that we have a team of students here that really see the message and want to go forward to finish this work. Brothers and sisters, we don't have long. Mm. and we need to be very serious about doing this work. And I just want to praise God for what he has done here these, these five days. As Brother Davis has said, and I, we have been blessed tremendously. Yeah. I have been taken much higher than I've ever been in my life in this message. And I just thank God for what he has done. At this time, let us kneel for as possible, and let us pray, and let's give God thanks for, for the outpouring of his spirit this week. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, we come before thy righteous and holy throne once again. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of prayer. We thank you, Lord, for the presence and the promise and the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, you have done a tremendous work here this week. We know, Lord, that this could not have been done without thee. It was a supernatural work. And we recognize you're moving. Even before this school started, we saw your hand. And then we have seen your hand all the way through it. And now, Lord, we just ask in this prayer 
as a prayer of consecration, a prayer of dedication, a prayer of commitment that each and every one of us, the students and every person in this building will now decide to make a covenant with you by sacrifice that we, by the power of the indwelling Christ, can be partakers of that divine nature. And Lord, that we can move forward, be a part of your team to finish this work yes. and crush the head of the serpent. Thank you again for all you've done for us this week. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. One more thing. I'm going to just give you a little charge, and I want to, um, you know, God has a way of doing things, and you just never know. what God is doing and how he's doing it. And I just want to say this evening, there's someone sitting in the audience. I know she didn't know I was going to do this. But you know, years ago, years ago, Magna, would you hold your hand? Magna and her husband, who was deceased now at this time, was a friend of ours, came to Chattanooga to a meeting that someone invited me to do at a church there, a real true Southern Day Adventist church. Years ago, they came. I didn't know them. They didn't know me. But they came to the meeting, and they were impressed with what the Lord blessed me to share. And as a result of them coming to that meeting, they invited me to Atlanta. That's the way I was introduced to Atlanta. Then as a result of me being introduced, Brother Davis was introduced. And so you go way back, how many years, Magna? How many? 15 years. Something that happened 15 years ago is a result of this happening right here. Isn't that amazing? We ended up, as a result of being here, then Brother Chris and him coming to a meeting in, in, in Chattanooga. And so it's just amazing what God has done. There's no telling where, where are we going from here, but I know, brothers and sisters, whatever we're going to do, we must do quickly now. Now, I'm going to give a charge, not only to the students, and not only to you, but to all of us. And it's taken from 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 3, verses 15 has been kind of the rather and cry here this week. We have looked at the central theme, and I just want to, I also just want to thank my wife, Maggie, would you come for just a moment? <laughs> I know she don't want to come here. I just want to thank my wife for just hanging with me all these years. I just want to thank her. And I want to thank my son who has started the Apocalypse Challenge. He said, listen, we need to do this. And I just want to thank him for, for moving forward with that. In 2 Timothy 3, 15, we have learned this week and that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. We, we found that to be a foundational text this week. Today, I want to move below that to chapter 4 in our charge. Just going to take a couple of minutes here. Paul, talking to Peter, I mean, talking to Timothy, said, I charge thee. I charge thee. I charge thee, be, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. I charge thee. Paul says, I charge thee, Timothy. After, after telling Timothy that from a child that was known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Then he says, all scriptures give my inspiration to God and is proper for doctrine, for reproof. He says, I charge thee. Then he says, verse 2. Listen to this. Now, verse 2 actually goes back to verse 16. He says, preach the word. 
Preach the word. He says, be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, rebuke. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. God is telling us, he's charging us now to preach the word. Brothers and sisters, we have to preach the word. He goes on to say, listen to this. This is five time. I, as I read this, I said, Lord, I know this is five time. Look what it says. Verse three. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Did, we, did not God learn a sound doctrine here this week? Have we not all, do we already see that the time has come when they will not endure sound doctrine? So it's time to preach the word. Look at this thing, saints. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Brothers and sisters, we are living this prophecy. We are living this right now, even as we speak. Verse 4 and 5, and we will end. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. I believe God has revealed this to us this week in a marvelous way. And it just lets us know that we indeed have to leave here and preach the word. We must consecrate and dedicate ourselves to God that he can, that he can do this through us. And verse 5, as we come to a close. But... Watch thou in all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of your ministry. God is calling us to move forward in faith. Spirit of Prophecy used these terms, ear long we would have been in the kingdom. And brothers and sisters, I believe from what we've learned this week, here alone, we will be in the kingdom if we will follow the counsel that God has given us. Thank you so very much for the blessings you've given to all of us this week. We just praise God again for all he's done here, and we're looking forward to move forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.